Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki and welcome to our Introduction of Business Organizations. Uh, today we're going to be discussing, uh, this is a series uh, that you're either taking me online or face-to-face -face class. I teach at uh, uh, several community colleges, uh, so look me up. Now, uh, today we're going to be talking about, so there's I think 21 uh, chapters. Uh, you already ha have my uh, concept maps in a PDF file, you'll, uh, as you're reading, you add on to it. We'll discuss this either in lecture, we already discussed this in lectures in, in the classroom or, uh, uh, what do you call it, excuse me, in a discussion board uh, in Blackboard course management system. You've been exposed to many of the terms and concepts here to uh, uh, connect uh, LearnSmart, which is the publisher's uh, uh, software or ebook or e-learning that comes with this uh, uh, series we're doing. So uh, uh, right now, what I want you to do, I'm going to go through this. It'll take, you about, it'll take me about an hour, and it's going to be a summarization of what you have already known, what you've read, and all your notes. And see, hey, do my notes coincide with Dr. George's notes? Or what did I forget? And that's the way we do it. Now, or, or you even while you're reading, listening to me, and you say, yeah, I already covered that. I understand that. I understand that. Oops, wait a minute. That's something new. Stop the video. There's a mind map. Stop it. Pause it. Write it. And then resume it. Remember, you can always turn my voice down a little bit. Uh, some have been, uh, you know, watched this video several times. So they don't want to hear me again. But they do. But, you know, the more senses you utilize, the better it is. So what are we going to talk about? And I'm going to open this up to a larger scale. Those of you in the... Uh, uh, know what I'm going to do, on, and I put a lot more verbiage than what I would require you to do. Just highlight the key words, because no matter what, how the uh, exam is going to be phrased, the question, if you know the basics, you'll be able to use your critical thinking skills that uh, we've been developing uh, within this course. Okay? So I'm going to view this, and I'm going to do, I think, uh, if I'm mistaken, let's see a 200. That 200 looks pretty good. All right? I just want to make sure because a lot of some people will uh, uh, view this uh, on their smartphone or their uh, uh, mini tablets. So I want to make sure it's easy for you to see. Okay, so what is marketing? Now when I look at marketing, and marketing, for lack of better words, when you, you read the, the, the book, and for those of you who have some kind of uh, knowledge of marketing, marketing is the heart of the communication system between myself, the business, business owner, or entity to my customers, whether it's to the consumer, the everyday consumer, which we usually would do more mass marketing, or to uh, uh, business to business, which would be more of a niche marketing, more relationship building marketing. One, I, could, uh, I get a lot of customers, maybe one-time deal. The other, business to business, I get repeat uh, uh, sales and I get a steady flow of income coming in. Both will give me a steady flow of income, but it's marketing, my communications that goes out. So when I said marketing, you know, some people say, well, I've taken Dr. George for advertising, I've taken Dr. George for sales, or, 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 and I've taken Dr. George for the full marketing class. Remember, this is uh, uh, just one component in this series of understanding introduction foundations of uh, uh, business uh, organizations. So each one of these chapters that we're discussing are full one or two semesters at a minimum to understand this. So if you're just taking this one class and say, I know everything I need to do uh, in uh, uh, business, uh, you're going to be in for a surprise. Okay, so when I'm looking at marketing, it's the heart, so it's the integrated. So when later on we're going to talk about advertising, when advertising, that's, that's the actual physical communication tool for marketing, but marketing has to come up with what is the message that I want sent out or communicated to my uh, constituents, my suppliers, or whoever my target market is. Once I understand that message that I want out there, then advertising will give the written or the, uh, or the verbal communication to the customers, focusing on that message. My sales staff will come in when they come and talk to the customers to reinforce that message. So the customer, when you take marketing, it has, uh, uh, it, you know, we, we utilize the term of frequency as an exposure. Not in this book, but when you take me for a marketing class. And that means how many times, how often do I have to expose an individual to get a certain 
response back from that individual in buying my product or at least talking about my product to other customers who may say, hey, that's just what I'm looking for. Good thing you, you brought that up. And that's part of the communication. How do I motivate? How do I stimulate? We've talked a, a couple of chapters ago, uh, we discussed motivation for employees, but the same conceptual idea of motivating employees with Maslow and hygiene and motivators is transferred over to marketing. Only now, instead of motivate them to do the, the work, I'm trying to motivate them to spend the money that I paid them to do the work so they buy my product, and then they think I can buy more supplies, hire more people, and it keeps the economy going. I just uh, the, the tied in the last several chapters. You see, oh, now that makes sense, okay? So for marketing to be successful, you have to find a need and we have to find, uh, uh, fill it. So there has to be a need out there. Somebody needs something. Like uh, when you look at, uh, uh, if I'm hungry, there's a need. I don't know how to cook or I don't have time to cook. I will look up, uh, uh, Google it and see, or on my smartphone to see where is the closest restaurant. And then that'll take care of my need. Okay, now the set of institution and processes for marketing to a uh, 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 be able to uh, exist, for lack of a better word, is uh, creating communication, delivering and exchanging offerings. Remember, here's what I offer, because there's a lot of co competition out there, other similar product, but what's the value that I add? And then a lot of time it could be real value or it could be perceived value. Why does everyone want an iPhone instead of a Samsung? It's perceived that iPhones are cooler, perceived that iPhones is a different status. Why do a lot of people want Blackberries? Even though people say Blackberries, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, smart, uh, uh, Smartphones uh, are kind of outdated. They may be outdated with the technology or the look, but they're still the best encrypted uh, uh, device that could uh, uh, protects me from other people being able to read my emails or my private conversation. And okay, I was going to show, and I was wondering if this is uh, uh, of Hillary Clinton, Senator Clinton, that's running for president when they're talking about the email controversy, if they had a black barrier security on that. And how are they going to remarket her? Or how are they going to remarket uh, other individuals? I don't try to do politics. I try to think, you know, we all are a brand. When I say when you're taking this class here in marketing, think of yourself as a brand. When you're working for a company as a brand, you know the pricing, you know something about it. And that's through marketing, communication to the customer, what we stand for. And the same thing as individuals. We tell people we, uh, how we dress, how we act, how we communicate. We create our own brand image, okay? All right, so uh, cultivating customer relationships for customers, clients, partners, and society. That's what marketing does. It's, uh, it's exchanging ideas and communicating that. And, you know, some of the websites of marketing today, and if I'm looking at marketing, they have to do identify uh, 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 product features, you know, uh, E-commerce is one way of looking at the new generations. Uh, you know, it was Generation Y, the millions. Now it's Generation Z and Generation Alpha the last three, four, five years. You know, it's another course I was teaching. So, it's, oh, so now Dave, uh, or, or, or the last chapter, excuse me, the last chapter um, in this book when they're talking about uh, uh, the, the motivating different generation. So it added in there. So somebody came up with the two new generation. How am I going to market to them? What is the technology going to be completely different? They may, uh, you know, they may think email. Who the heck emails? That's old fashioned. It may be a whole different way of doing it uh, going forward. But marketing is that flexible. So we still got to communicate to the market that we're targeting. If I'm okay. So identify product features, that's what the, the websites do, find the best prices, uh, question sellers. You have blogs and social networks. You have a lot of companies, a president, everyone has a blog so they can communicate whether they're responding to the blog or they have a staff of individuals that are sending the message or the brand message to the individuals, who knows. And once in a while you do actually have the individual in there, I'm not saying that, the, that they don't, all right? But there's so many people going on there and they try to respond to everything. Okay, marketing concept includes three parts. Customer orientation, you got to need the customer. Find out what customers want and providing it. That's the market and the need. Service orientation, customers want to be serviced, making sure everyone in your organization is committed to customer satisfaction. From the bottom, 
person bagging, anyone's doing, you know, even cleaning the uh, the office, because when a customer comes, the atmosphere. I'm talking about high quality, I'm going to a restaurant, if you see dirt and stuff like that, there you're going to say, oh, if this is dirty, I wonder what the kitchen is like, okay? Uh, profit orientation, like or not, I'm a business, even for non-profit, they have to make some, uh, uh, the contributions have to be used wisely, and expenses have to be controlled, so they could uh, utilize that money to help the cause, Okay, so uh, profit focusing on goods and services that will earn the most profit. Okay, same thing when you're looking at uh, uh, which jobs or which tasks I want to do, you're looking at what's the reward uh, for that. Okay, both profit and non-profit organizations. Okay, when you look at CMR, Customer Relationship Management, and this is something important because even if I'm a small business, a medium business, or a larger business, or even when I'm dealing with other departments within my organization because it's larger or medium, those are my internal customers. They pay me internally uh, with function numbers versus cash, but it's, it's just, as, uh, just as good, or credits for lack of better words. Customer relation management, learning as much as you can about the customers, doing what you can do to satisfy or exceed their expectation so they come back and buy from me. Okay, or now something, uh, all right, let's do it this way. Organizations seek to enhance customer satisfaction, building long term relationships. It, it, you know, when the author talked about the, or the book, and you know, even research is showing that it's up to five times more costly to find new customers than it is to maintain uh, the old one. It's no different if you look at your own relationship with your loved one, if you're married or with your partner or whatever, uh, uh, or your friends or anything else. Uh, uh, it's easy to say, I still love you. It's easy to say, how are you doing? You're doing a great job. Then to go out and find a new person, a new mate or anything else. Because then you have to be nicer, whiner, and diner. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, I'm going to bring a little humor into the, uh, into the mix. But when I'm looking at, you know, uh, statistically, customers, they come to me, they buy my product. Look, if you go to a McDonald's, Burger King, Target, uh, Macy's, uh, Blumino's, wherever you're going to, if they treat you properly, you're going to come back. If you had a bad experience, you may give them one more chance. Second experience, you can just avoid them completely. And then after a while, if the customers ain't coming, then there's no more business. So when you're working in the retail, you may sometimes get upset with the customers, but if it wasn't for the customers, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a job, okay? Remember, it's a customer relationship. Just think that uh, in your mind. Even when you're a business owner, when you see employees treating the customers wrong, be careful because it's a word of mouth. Word of mouth nowadays in social media, man, it could go like that, viral, as they say. Okay, today's firms like uh, uh, Priceline, Travisity, uh, 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 use CMR that allow customers to build a relationship with the suppliers. Okay, now, emergency, uh, emerging mobile markets, digital technology to continue to grow. So if I look at this, uh, when I look at the consumer demands are expected to rise in this uh, area. Uh, uh, consumers now want to interact anywhere at any time. Remember, I'm going a little slower than uh, uh, normally, but you could always stop me, add on. It, you know, just don't, you could read it if you're good, but a lot of times if you could write it, the more senses you utilize, the better you'll remember, or law, the higher probability you'll be able to retain it when you need it for the exam. And a lot of this information here is going to be for your paper. You're going to be writing up for me, my feasibility paper. Okay, consumers want to interact anytime, right? The right technology, and that gives me that option. I want to use information, new ways to create value for them. Tell me everything else. I can compare right there. Uh, or I'm in a store, tell me where the sales are, or notify me when you have the sale. For me, consumers expect personalized experience. I will only uh, notify you on items that you uh, brought or similar items, not everything in the store because you have no interest unless you note it or update your profile. And once I know your profile, I know how to, uh, you know, if you take me for consumer behavior, um, uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, know when to put the right triggers or how to motivate that individual with positive reinforcement. Okay? Now, supply, uh, simplicity, always keep it simple. Consumers want all interaction to be easy. That's why, when you, you know, a lot of times your phone's dial one, dial two, you write it. That's not easy. That's the time consuming. I want to call in, hello, yeah, I want to talk to so and so. Or I got this issue. I got one operator, gets information, and transfer me right away. I had the human contact. 
still need the human kind. A little different when I'm online because uh, I could take my time on it. But if I'm on the phone, uh, I'm calling because I want to interact. Okay. Now, service with a smile. Okay. You have to have six steps for keeping customer happy. And this is kind of interesting. I'm not going to go through a build trust, emphasis on long term relationship, listen. Remember, God gave you two ears, one mouth. Uh, treat your customers like stars. Show appreciation. I really appreciate. Thank you for coming in. I know you didn't buy anything, but thank you anyway. Maybe next time I can satisfy. Maybe you could find something. In a few weeks, we're gonna have a sale. I know if you're looking at this thing. Always get, get, uh, give them something positive. Not I mean, buy nothing. Looking at very gold. It's coming in the store eating the uh, 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 the candy or something else. You know, uh, it's your job as a sales force to motivate them, to push them. You know, uh, my job as marketing is to bring them in. The sales Salesforce job is once they're there for them to uh, leave as a uh, with a cash transaction um, and a happy customer. Okay, cost acquiring new uh, uh, customers, and we already talked about that. Four areas of U.S. Uh, marketing: you have production area. I'm not going to go into this selling, uh, marketing concept, and customer relationship. Where we're really at now <coughs> is CNR, customer relationship, and what they're looking at. Oh, Jesus, this thing come out here. Excuse me. And we talked about that, okay? I, I had a separate thing, okay? So we're all set on this, okay? So that's where I had it up here. I just did this, uh, how did I get more to market? Okay, I just uh, left that one uh, there. Okay, all right? So I won't go into the fact, I should have had the, the remember, we're live. So I just had my, one of my, um, uh, foot the, the way I, I positioned the, the concept max, I can move them around. I'll change it later. Look. You're going to be doing a presentation for me, either in the classroom, we're going to be recording, or if you're taking me online, you'll be doing the YouTube uh, uh, similar to this. You, uh, Everyone's got a face camera. You have, uh, you know, I see a lot of movies and everything else. You just put yourself up. And hi, my name is George, the student, and here's my product. Or if we're working a team, so you'll, uh, you'll figure it out, okay? Now, a nonprofit marketing. Now, when I look at nonprofit marketing, some of the tactics for nonprofit. Now, nonprofit. I still got a market. I still let them know of my cause. Only that the administrative and the cause, the my profit for a profit that I use and give back to my shareholders, I use that profit to give back to the cause to either help uh, uh, animals, uh, help uh, what do you call it, uh, battered women or battered men, or homeless or whatever the cause is. You know, cancer. I'm just throwing some out there. So that's uh, for nonprofit, just to uh, basically help the cause. But you still have to pay the administrative and, and uh, costs out there. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into uh, accounting. Okay, so some of the taxes are fundraising, public relations, special campaigns, uh, changing public opinions. Remember, a lot of times this is also the same thing that could be utilized in the profit, but this is uh, more of a focus for the nonprofit. Ecological uh, practices, increasing organizational membership. And you see when you have uh, uh, the Channel 11, a public service say hey a given here we'll put your name on there we'll give you something because it's a non-profit organization but they need to still pay the electricity pay the bra uh, the airtime pay the production pay the uh, so it's still an expense on there but they do send the message and, and it's good broad uh, good uh, um, uh, educational uh, broadcasting out there okay now some of the strategies remember non-profit uh, determine the, the goals and objectives focus on long-term marketing Exercise planning, train, and develop long-term volunteers. Carefully segment the target market. You know, a lot of, some people may not give to one cause for whatever reason. If you're trying to give a cause to, uh, uh, and I just use myself, you know, to the Roman Catholic, to the Catholic, and I'm a uh, a, a, a Son of Baptist, I may not give to that cause because that's not my religion. Or if I'm giving a cause to uh, 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 cancer. I mean, I want to give a cause to cancer. I mean, I want to give a cause to uh, for like uh, diabetes. So you know, remember, so uh, there's only so much you're going to give. So center, make sure nonprofit very focused. And if you build the membership up, uh, up, then you could always bring other members in because they'll be, uh, you know, they'll, they'll pay a flat fee. Okay. Now the four P's. You're going to see marketing. Four P's of marketing. Okay. Let me just close these up so we can talk. And here's the pick out of that. So you're going to have, right, I'm a marketing manager, I'm a store owner, 
um, myself trying to get the next job. I have to look at myself. I'm a product. What could I offer? I'm looking how much do, uh, do I want to be paid? So now I'm looking at my product. What's my product? What's the value? Uh, how much going to cost? What's my expensive? How much would I pay for it? How much would the customers pay? Where's the place? Where am I getting the, the, the delivery from? Uh, uh, where's my manufacturing, my warehouses, and uh, basically promotion. How do I uh, tell them to send my message, tell them what the pricing is? You know, uh, I'm an area, I'm just new, and people, uh, so they're aware that I'm out there. And I have to remind them always in marketing, because if I don't come out there, they'll forget about me. So I give them a coupon, I, I'm in the paper, I'm some kind of uh, advertising, uh, something out there, so I'm in the in their space, I want to say face, but in their space, so they see me and every now and then when they need the thing, they'll, they'll, it's the last thought in their mind and they'll be able to pull it because it's repetition is embedded in their thinking process, psychology. Okay, so what's a product, okay? Now, uh, if I'm looking at a product, and here's the definition of product, good or service, uh, when I look at product and from this perspective, good or service means the same thing, interchangeable, satisfies the customer's want or need, we have test marking. You have to test it. That's what you're doing the feasibility right now. You're just going out there and thinking about does it make sense. Then later on, you'll take me for retail merchandising or you'll take me for uh, uh, advertising or something else. And what you've done, you know, people say, I've got it. Why do I need this? It's the same project. No, you've got the basic. You're an architect. You have here. Now I'm putting it on the shell. And now I'm going to go in and I'm the interior decorator. I'm putting the furniture in. How's it going to arrange? What's your personnel? Outside's there. That's what you did in the uh, 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 in, in this class. You're just going to create the outside shell, think of an idea, think of a concept, a feasibility, and then you take me for other classes and you start designing the inside. You'll do well, okay? So now brand name, what's a brand? Word, letter, group of words uh, that different, uh, differentiates one seller or goods from another. And it could be a... a uh, 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 flexible or uh, high quality versus uh, it's so so okay now pricing what are you going to price the good you got to look at the competitor's pricing you got to look at the production your cost you have to look at the distribution how many get it from one part to the other we have a couple of chapters look at logistics you look at high or low price strategy if i have it high it shows quality but it's too high if i have a low it shows uh, 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 average goods not an exceptional on that so how do I bring it? And that's where marketing and advertising, when you talk about promotion, have a higher price, coupon it down, discount it down. The price is still, look, I got this thing's worth $500. I got it for 250 Wow, what a deal. And the maid only paid you uh, $75 to make it a $50. In the customer's mind, you're not lying. Here's the prices here you're willing to pay, right? Remember, it's a free market. I'm not overcharging them. It's not a, a commodity that they have to have. It's either a luxury item or something else. And there's other competitors out there, so we could do pretty good. And remember, when I look at marketing, I, you know, um, uh, I always be ethical, always be fair, because you, you, uh, if you look at what happened with Volkswagen, if you look at what happened uh, with, uh, uh, and we'll talk about Volkswagen or Nike, when they had their shoes, the runner from Kenya was running a race, and then the insult came out, uh, and he lost, he won the race, but he didn't beat the world uh, uh, the time by a couple of seconds and maybe that slowed him down or distracted him so he didn't have the momentum but uh, look at Nike it didn't do well for the brand how are they going to recoup with this what are you going to say uh, I don't know you know it'll be interesting to watch okay now but where are you going to place the product you're in the four please you're going to have the middleman and uh, that's the distribution logistic uh, or the warehouse or store am I making it or I'm bringing it in because uh, getting uh, uh, products to the con uh, consumer is critical and then we're going to talk about promotion. And then uh, part of promotion is promotion. All techniques that sellers use to inform about their product and motivate them to purchase their products. Advertising, personal selling, public relations, sales promotion. I think I said here was uh, 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 all techniques sellers use to inform uh, 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 people about their products and motivate them to purchase them. And then viral marketing is basically uh, strictly... Uh, uh, someone else talking or out, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, communicating that this product is the best without you knowing that they're being paid for it, okay? All right, so now let's go now. Perfect uh, uh, promotion. 
it, you know, get customers emotional about your product. And remember, nonprofits do a good job or, or when they're looking for that. I'm sorry. I just want something to drink. Because emotions, if I get them emotionally involved, that's like the glue that'll keep all the my messages, my products, my value, because the emotion will lock it together, okay? Make your product built to love. I use emotion light in advertising. You know, not manipulated, but emotions to get them a uh, feeling. Um, when you look at charitable contribution, they do that. They see some of that's in um, a dire need, and in your emotion, I really want to help. But, you know, the picture may be there's a dire need, but you have to look at the administrative costs. And those have had me before in ethics, because uh, if the administrative cost is 90% and only 5% goes, that's uh, uh, the company's in dire need. You need to have about like 10 or 15% uh, administrative cost and 85% to 80% going to help the cost. You know, be a likable person. I'm trying to do that. Most of us are in, uh, in the retail. Having confidence, being intriguing uh, without being overpowering. Show interest in others. Be enthusiastic and respectful. Now, market research, you have to analyze the market first. Because I have to understand what's in the market, what my competitors are doing, what's my customers like, who are my customers, what's their, uh, their social life, what's the economic structure, what's their lifestyles, uh, what's changing, what's on their mind. And once I analyze the market to determine the challenges, opportunities, we're going to talk about the SWAT uh, in, in the next chapter, uh, finding the information needed to uh, make good decisions, identify the products and consumers, using them. So they use them now and come back in the future. I'm looking at sustainability in the market for my brand that people buy, use it, and or tell other people this is the best brand in the world. Look what it's done for me. It's helped me. And now they'll come back. One-time deal is a fad. Uh, when I teach retail merchandising, uh, a trend is a little better, maybe uh, two or three months, but I want a long term. I want that classic. I want people coming back. And then it depends on your business, but your researchers say, here's what's changing. You're not changing quick enough. Here's what uh, your customers, your clients uh, want, and now you have to adjust to it. Okay, four steps in marketing research. Identifying the problem, collecting research data, analyzing the data, and choosing the best solution to implement it. Those are the four steps. I'm going to go use them all separately now because it will be easier for you uh, when you come around here. Okay, Defining the problem because there's a lot here. Okay, What's the present situation? What are the alternatives that I have? What information I need to make sure I can make a good decision? How should the information be gathered? Okay, now, collecting the research data. Secondary data, stress it right now in your small business or anything. If I could get majority of my information, secondary data, my cost is less expensive, maybe more credible. Not specifically to my question, but pretty darn close where it costs me pennies on a, do uh, uh, on a dollar or you know, like a thousand uh, uh, names or some very little uh, uh, cost. So that is, uh, I always utilize secondary first. And now I understand or I think I understand the market. And that's when I use my primary data and do the surveys and everything else. So let's go to uh, secondary data. Existing data that has been previously collected, sources like government and personal expenses, is usually easy, uh, easily accessible. Data doesn't provide all the needed information, everything I said. Now, primary data, in-depth information by marketers for their own research or business owners to collect primary data, uh, uh, telephone, online surveys, you have monkey uh, uh, survey, you have different surveys for you, personal interviews and focus group. They talked about focus group more because when I'm looking at focus group, I have an advertising or a question. I ask them and I have people watching their expression. Nowadays, they got computers. They can watch it. They can sense if I'm sweating, if I'm nervous or if my emotions have been stimulated. I say, yes, yeah, so, okay, I hit a nerve or I'm angry or I'm twitching. You know, all those is what a focus group tells me. Plus, they give me their honest opinion. Now the focus group gets paid. But I'm looking for a, a remember, focus group is usually a sample size of the larger group that I'm trying to sell my product. I can't interview everyone. It's not cost effective, not efficient. But I get a different variety, different ages, lifestyle, and I bring them in and I can kind of get a good feeling depending on the confidence level. Usually fairly well. 
And, you know, I could be wrong, but 90% of the time they're fairly uh, on target. A focus group uh, who meet under direction of discussion leaders to communicate opinions. Okay. All right. Now, I got the data, researched the data, went to the focus group. What I'm going to do with all this information? You gathered it. What are you going to do with it? Think about it. I got to analyze the data. Now I got it. I have everything else. What is it telling me? It's telling me marketers must turn the data into useful information. Marketers must use their day, their uh, use their an, an analysis to plan the strategies. How could I change? Make recommendations, or say, "Hey, the data is telling me I'm on course. Let it be." Okay, uh, that's what my GPS tells me, right? Look at it that way. It's something else. It's, it's analyzing constantly where I'm at, what road, and it's putting me back on target and uh, uh, telling me to take this detour or go this way and you'll come back on uh, to the location you're trying to go to. Marketers must evaluate their actions and determine if further research is uh, needed. Looking now, remember, so that's out of, uh, when I'm looking at this, uh, where the heck am I? Uh, uh, four steps for marketing research and we're on step number uh, uh, four. Uh, right, uh, market must analyze. Okay, implementation is real easy. Put into action. Even if you implement it, make sure it's changing because you you did doing you did your best job and you did an excellent job creating the plan, the strategic, and now you're live and now you have to make those tweaks. Like you you built you ordered a cabinet, and you've measured everything else. You measured here, you measured there, and you try to put it in, but right here is just a little bit off. Oh, I measured this side. But nothing's perfectly square in the house. This is made out of metal, welded, and even that has some, uh, uh, it'd be pretty right on there. Okay, so when I'm looking at that, I had to make some adjustments to fit it. Got to shimmy it, wiggle it in, or trim a little bit here, but I have to do it. And so I implement it. Don't say it's going, it's going to do a lot. You look at it to make sure that you do the adjustment. That's through the communication, the feedback with the people that are watching the process. Okay? Now, key benefits. Okay, I got stuck a little bit, A, B, C. Key benefits of marketing research. Uh, analyze the customer's need and satisfaction. You know, uh, uh, current market opportunities. You know, look at different strategies. Uh, analyze the process and tactics you using now. Should I change them? Remember, it's nice to do modifications instead of do drastic changes. Analyze the reason for goals and achievement of failures. Hey, you're going to mess up. Failures are happening. That's part of business. That's just like risk management. People don't have a job for risk management. Insurance company would have a job for risk management. It's just a risk management. It happens. Things happen. So what happens when you do it? How do I, I fail, didn't work out? I'm a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a risk taker. I look at it, try to find out what went wrong, and I try it again with modification. Well, I think it'll work this time. It just fell apart. If it fell apart, why did it fall apart? I wasn't talking. I was making faces there. I know sometimes on video, it's a little lag time, depending on your uh, software, but it should go smoothly. Okay, ways to find out what, uh, ways to find out what uh, consumers think. Uh, conduct informal consumer survey. Host a focus group. Listen to competitors. Uh, store uh, customers survey your own sales force. They hear it every day. And even people in the register on the floor, they hear customers. They know more. We don't tap into them. You don't tap into them. I go, why don't you just ask them? They don't have to. They'll talk. They'll say, customers want this, this product. They think it's ugly. They think I don't have enough room here. Look at them. Talk to your customers. You talk to them. Remember, previously listen to them. And respond and say, hey, that was a good idea. Thank you for helping me. And again, I think just thank them. I didn't think about customers. I didn't realize I was doing something wrong. Except my apologies. Good customer relationship management. Okay? And if you want to take those classes, I think uh, 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 both community colleges, uh, College of Lake County and Harper that I teach at. One's in uh, Cook County, Illinois. The other one's in uh, 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 Lake County. Uh, look up their, uh, their business social science. Ask them or look up. They both have a, a business uh, uh, arm that strictly uh, does training for businesses on one-on-one. No credit hours. 
pays a lot, uh, little bit more, but they'll uh, come to your doorstep or to your office and customize the training program. And you're helping the community. You're paying taxes already for it. It's part of the community. It's a good social responsibility aspect from business to business and also from consumers to the college that uh, gives you the opportunity to keep your skill sets uh, current. Right? Employers and employers both. Okay, environmental scanning. In marketing, I'm looking at, and here's the chart. I'm not going to, uh, there's a pick, I'll go this way. I'm not going to go through there because basically my chart here, you know, uh, you, you have it from the book. You can look at it, stop it. Because look, if I'm looking at global, I flip this on here, and I got trade agreements with global. See, trade agreements, compensation. I created that for you. You, I, get, I provided you the headers, write them in yourself as part of learning. Uh, we discussed this in class. You already probably had that all written up. There's no reason to go through it. You got the chart. Look at it. The whole thing still looks at it. When I'm looking at this um, uh, environmental forces, it's all looking at where's my place at, what's my product, what's affecting my price, you know, the SWAT, uh, SWAT strength, weakness, and opportunity, strengths and weakness are within the organization, opportunities and threats are outside. I, as a business owner, have to be aware of it. As a marketer, if there's an opportunity, a threat against me, or something that's, you know, and it could be a uh, false, uh, false uh, accusation, I respond through marketing, through advertising, to contain it or to put my side of the story or utilize public relations, uh, which is a little more credible than a paid advertising, to uh, convince the general public this is uh, uh, my position and here's what how I see it and here's what I say to my, uh, uh, here, here's my side of the story. And then you have the two different sides, those two sides of the story and which one's more credible depends on your uh, delivery and uh, your past relationships with your uh, uh, stakeholders, not stockholders, stakeholders, okay? So you have all the information in there, so, but it all basically on price, uh, you know, promotion, I, uh, you know, price is a little different depending on the economic condition of a country or uh, a cycle that we're in, you know, uh, same thing with product, where uh, are they located, where does it make sense, okay? Now, ABCs of marketing, you throw this in, you take sales, same ABCs, always be customer focused. Got it? Because, you know, to a point, I'm a business person. I am very customer focused. I help them out, but they're going to be so obnoxious or disrespectful to my employees. I ask them to leave the door, leave here. Because that's not my type of, this is stakeholder. One person that's disrespectful, it shows me my uh, credibility and my determination to. Uh, um, uh, provide the best service and be a social responsible business owner, similar like you are uh, as a customer or a student. Benchmark against the best firms, continuously improve your performance, develop the best package, uh, empower uh, your employees, focus on uh, relationships, and goal achievement is the reward. Okay, business to business or business to um, a consumer. Business to the consumer, real easy. All individuals and households that want goods and services for personal use and have the resources to buy them. I'm a bit. You're never going to see on a test. You're never going to see consumer to consumer. You know, eBay's consumer. No, eBay's not consumer to consumer. When you're selling a product, you take the role of a business person. And I'm bidding on that to take the role of a consumer. You see what I'm talking about? So there's no consumer to sell. The minute I'm selling something is the role or the attributes of what I would call the business functionality. All right, now business, so this one is business to sell to consumer. This other one is business to sell to business to business. My background is business to business, but as I said it before, from a marketing perspective, I'm marketing to businesses, but for me to show, add that value added, I understand my customer, my, my business to business clients, which are residential customers or commercial, I mean, uh, consumers. So if I'm selling Pepsi to Juul or, da, or, or not that I'm saying, to Mariano's or to Walmart or whatever, or Target, I'm trying to hit them all so they don't say, oh, your favorite for one, I shop at all of them, wherever it's on sale, I'm an American shopper, come on. Uh, so when I'm uh, uh, targeting them, I'm trying to say buy more Pepsi, I have to have the price to stimulate, I, I'll pay for your advertising, for something else in your flyer, as long as you put Pepsi or Coca-Cola, whatever the name of the brand is, 
uh, and I'll help you stimulate your market because they don't need my product if they can't get customers to buy my product. So you see I me. Mean? So I have to go there, even though I'm not selling to them directly. I'm selling to them indirectly through uh, 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 by understanding my business to business clientele's their customer base better than they understand it. Okay. Uh, let's see, individuals and organizations buy goods and service production to rent, sell, individual marketing, smaller than consumers, more uh, rational. They're not just by, uh, uh, if you look at your logistics or your procurement individual, he's not like by emotion. He or she's basically looking at, uh, is the value, does it reach my specification, could it meet my timing, Is the delivery, does it meet the needs or objectives of my production, or the needs or objectives of why I'm uh, ordering this uh, particular uh, a part or service from, uh, uh, from an outsized uh, vendor, okay? And individually marketed, smaller geographically, end of uh, use product, consumer, the consumer may use it for one uh, item, uh, and, I, and I utilize the concept of a toilet paper, toilet, you know, is the end use of the product, toilet paper, wipe your butt wet for lack of better words. Okay, if I buy it as a consumer, that's what I'm doing it for. I'm using it for the practicality, I'm using it to use it and dispose of it. If I'm buying it from a business perspective, I'm not using it for my uh, uh, restrooms, because then I'm basically a consumer, or you could, you could go that way and say it's kind of an expense. Let's say if I'm buying it, I buy a thousand cases. No way I could use a thousand cases. And the reason I'm using it for me, because I'm not using it for my personal use, I'm selling baskets because college kids are going back to school. Here's a nice uh, 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 welcome to college basket with your toiletry, you know, soap and everything else, shampoo, or for uh, guys, a backpack. So I'm putting the toilet paper inside there. So my end use is always when you're looking, and the reason I use toilet paper is what's the end use of the product will determine whether it's a business-to-business concept remember because they said i keep on reselling product i buy it that's why i don't pay tax on it because it's a component of my product which ultimately uh, i get another of several components and ultimately i sell to my consumer as an iphone or a, um, a s or a samsung s kind of nice iphone got a iphone s samsung got a, a samsung s okay all right, business to business, to 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 to. Okay, we're good on that. Okay, now and then I. Uh, okay, we're good. Okay, marketing to consumers. If I look at marketing consumers, I'm almost done. Not about twenty minutes. Uh, let's see what I have here. Okay, when I'm marketing to consumers, I have to look at you know because I'm doing more of a market, a mass marketing. A little different when I do business to business because they're like we talked before, geographic, smaller number. So I'm doing a larger area. I can't market to all of them. It's going to be too uh, 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 costly. So I segment my market by different things. By a segment, target, geographic, demographic, psychographic, uh, uh, benefits, and volume usage. By size and diversity of customers. Forces is me, the marketer, or the business owner, to decide which groups do you want to serve. I'm in a neighborhood. Who comes into my store? There may be different kind of cultures, but only one type of individual comes to my store. I try to market to them and then find something to draw in the other individuals that may not consider my store a store on their venue list that they would shop at. Okay? And I always used to use the example of uh, Target and Walmart. There's some individuals that never walk into Walmart, but they'll walk into Target because they figure Walmart is not to their style, for lack of better words. And they're both the same, carry the same products, uh, but it's just their perception of something, which is not wrong, but market. So Target said, hey, we are Target, a little bit higher than Walmart, and that's where they're at. And the same thing with Costco and Sam's. One is a little bit higher price, carries similar items, but now Sam's is trying to uh, market their way trying to convince consumers that Sam's and Walmart are two separate ent entities. Where Costco doesn't have that identity crisis or the similarity crisis or what we call cannibalization because one is buying out of the other instead of brand new customers coming in. <clears throat> so your market is kind of limited. Are they, you know, because it's still Walmart customers but not specifically Sam's customers. Where Costco's, for lack of better words, does not have like a target as a part of it. So they are staying along. So People look at them as a, a high-end uh, warehouse slash 
uh, uh, res uh, uh, consumer market. Okay, so I'm looking at the uh, uh, why I should diversify by size so I could target. I'm going to segment it by the market, which divides total market into groups with similar characteristics. I'm not stereotyping similar characteristics, the size and diversity of the consumer market. And one thing I could say, if I'm going to a certain market, I could break down people who have brand new cars, they have different needs than somebody who has a car five years or uh, you know, five, uh, uh, up to five years old, another one five years to ten. So I could, you see, I, I could do something like that. There's still individuals, male, female, but they have different needs. One's more breaking down, one does, just wants to fix it, so they may be looking for a low-cost mechanic. The other one's top of the line, because I still, it's brand new, I paid a lot of money for it. This one depreciated, its value is less, so they don't want to spend as much into it, but still want it to be functional and reliable. Different markets, so I'll sell them a little differently. Okay, now target marketing is selecting which segments an organization can serve profitably, even for nonprofit. Which one are going to pay, or uh, give me some uh, uh, cash inflows so I could make my product and pay and uh, uh, reward my shareholders, not stock, I mean, uh, not stakeholders, shareholders uh, for investing in my organization or my business. Okay, geographic segmentation is dividing the market by, you know, geographic, you know, it makes sense. You, know, you have the city, you have the suburbs, you have by different towns, you look in the Grays Lake, you look in Palatine, you go to Joliet, uh, right, to different, you can uh, segment it, because dependence on the cluster of individuals in that area, that makes sense. When one person goes to Joliet, drive all the way up to Waukegan or Zion, it's, to, it's from one end of the state, you're not, uh, uh, unless there's a lot of money, or a lot of potential for sales, you'd open up a, a, a subsidiary out there. Okay, but you would just break it down by there in that area and you just sell to that market there. Okay, demographic segmentation. Now here we're gonna go dividing the market by age, income, education, and demographic variable. Well, look at age. Look at my, I'm very conservative. I used to have long hair, but look at me now, very conservative. But a lot of people my age that may have more gray hair may be not as mobile as I am, or they may be more active than I'll ever be, more muscular, uh, whatever. Or they may, you know, I may like this kind of music, they may like classical, I may like heavy rock. So when I'm looking at age, age is just giving me general. I got so many people in this age group, and here's some similarities. They all need something, okay? They have certain uh, 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 characteristics that I could uh, uh, break it up and, and target to them, okay? Now, uh, psychographic, and uh, here I'm looking at kind of dividing the market by group values, interests, opinions. I want to save a, a lifestyle. Depends on the author, didn't use it, but you could throw that in there. Okay, now benefits segmentation. Okay, dividing the market according to the products, benefits the customers prefers. Volume usage, I could always say that's what Costco's and Sam does. The more you buy the economies of scale, I could reduce the price by the volume, or I could look at a market. You know, I'm not going to open up, I, I may have a little store, but to expand to a larger store. Colleges do the same thing when they have their, uh, their extension site. They're small, offering a small uh, a variety of classes, you know, of a community college. I, uh, uh, I teach at community colleges, so I understand how they're doing. So they're going out there. It, you, know, you know, I mean, they start off small. College of Lake County, for a uh, fact, started off small in some of their uh, uh, extension sites. Now they're full blown campuses because the population in the area grew and it could sustain the full campus with. Uh, 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 you could go to the one campus and complete your full degree, is what uh, the issue is when they consider a full campus instead of just an extension site. A lot of four-year university have extension site certain degrees that are profitable and there's enough customers or students in that area to offer that degree program at that site if not you have to hit several extension sites or go to the main campus okay and the segmenting uh, graphs and here's basically if i'm looking geographic northwestern uh, uh, uh demographics age you know male field and you, you know broken down 18 uh, uh uh, 11 to 18, 19 to 34 is in the same age, what they consider out of the teenage uh, age. It still has the same likes and dislikes schools. So this was pretty good, you know. And the other one is when I'm looking at the benefits, comfort, 
a health luxury, psychographic personality uh, values. Oh, there is lifestyle on there. Okay. Okay, now marketing to small segments, real quickly. You have niche marketing is identify small but profitable market segments designs to find products or uh, for them. One-to-one -one marketing, that's usually sales, developing unique mix of goods and services for each individual consumer. And if you look at this, some makeup that uh, they, they'll take a test on your face and they'll be able to analyze and give you just the right mixture of uh, 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 natural, organic uh, uh protein or vitamins whatever to take the wrinkles out of their face you see how it worked on mine i'm just kidding okay uh, now mass marketing we talked about that developing products and promotion to please a large group of uh people movie industries try to do that what are people into now all right uh, looks like a lot of uh, uh never mind it's kind of scary what's in there well, you have uh, uh the holidays coming up okay relationship marketing Rejects the idea of mass uh, production. Remember, in business to business, not mass production. There's one on one. But they're trying to bring the same concept. If you have a small business, what brings customer in? You know them by the first name. They talk to you. They find out about you. And you feel kind of guilty. You want to buy something from them because they're really good people. When I, uh, when I walk into a larger department store or a discount uh, store, it's just large. and uh, no, It's informal. Yes, sir, can I help you? They smile, hi, have a nice day. They say the same thing over and over, over 50,000 times. It's like, all right? But, you know, you still have to smile. I still kind of feel, you know, they're not mean at me. But it's a little different than a smaller store because they're not as busy. They have time to talk to you. And that's what you have to do with business to business. But their largest sales that way. Okay, keys to successful relationship marketing. Uh, uh, open communications with the uh, with your customer. Be frank with them. Stay in contact with your customers through emails, through some of the apps. Trust, honesty, ethical behavior. Consistently reliable service. Like it or not, I paid for it. I don't want to come back and get an exchange. Or oh, give you one for a while. It's the time at the day. Get a part at the drive to the store. You know, my time is worth something. Dr. George, give me a break. Remember, give them good quality. So they say, I brought this and lasted me. Uh, you know, so you say, well, then they're going to replace it. Fine. You know, most stuff, five, ten years, you forget where they bought it from afterwards. Or maybe not. But you have that. But then, you uh, look, I got my DVDs are good. But the, it doesn't play the new uh, format. Or it doesn't have the Netflix. It doesn't have, you know, I'm trying to sell. It doesn't have stream. It doesn't have a lot of things in there that not the new ones have for a third of the call. I got it. Because the benefits or the new technology will replace the old. Okay, buying decision in the process, PowerPoint. Let's look at the buying decision. If I'm looking at this, uh, 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 right, so you don't have to go, you can stop it. You have uh, marketing influences, perception, attitude, uh, type of purchases, you know, reference group. All these affect the consumer. If you notice a woman, why a woman? Because women now are the biggest power, financial force in the United States and even worldwide. You know, because of the, the economy, a lot of men lost their jobs because of construction or their trades, a good paying job. So women had to pick up the, the slack, for the better words, and, but they now control the finances. They watch the money. They're not, you know, they still spend it, but not just like a guy, I feel like spending it. Uh, they're looking a little more frugal, looking at, hey, okay, we can spend this. Are we getting the best value for our price? So all this is, uh, uh, you know, you throw this in here, but even for women, all the impact, all the forces are, you know, problem solving. So now it's going to happen. So I'm looking at this, you know, the key references I have uh, on here, but here's the decision-making problem. We have a whole ch thing on that. I just pass it. You have to understand the problem. Not the symptom. What do I want to solve? Where do I find it? You Google or research it or friends or peer group. Alternative or the doctor or, or your instructor. Uh, uh, alternative evaluation. You look at it. You purchase the decision, yes or no. You buy it, post, uh, purchase, uh, evaluate. Every time I buy something, I go in for something, I see something better, I think. I bring it home and I go, man, I wish I brought the other thing. But then when I look at it, I said, no, I did the right decision. But it depends on the marketing or the advertising that says, hey, this is uh, good for this. And I look at the other, I did get a better deal. Or I go on Google and I do the reviews. What's the best uh, product? What's the review on this product? And I get a good uh, understanding, okay? 
So one of my top challenges, marketing can be challenging for both uh, business to uh, consumer or businesses to business because you got brand awareness to brands that look similar. Social media, let me just move this over a little bit here. I apologize. Social media, uh, converting leads into consumers or customers, budgeting, increased profit, uh, increasing profit. And this is from the entrepreneur, if you're uh, looking where the sources come from. I had somebody asked me before, you go put in this information, where do you get to, you know, it's in a book, it's in everything else, but fine, uh, some individuals may see it, so here's your story. Okay, business to business, uh, who are business to business uh, uh, customers or uh, manufacturers, wholesalers and retailers, the government's business to business, good, uh, a lot of paperwork, but it's uh, good to get uh, an account with them, they're always going to be around. Hospital, schools, and charity. Products are often sold and resold several times before we, uh, uh, reaching the final consumer. And we talked about that later on. And here's the chart with the differences. Uh, uh, this is the one I'm looking at. So it kind of tells you everything we're going to talk about. It's the last one. Okay, geographically, by products, right? Consumer market, the business to market. Required technical complex uh, products, the business to business. Uh, rest uh, less technical. Remember, I only got one computer in a business. You have a whole network of uh, anywhere from five up to uh, uh, a couple thousand, or a thousand for lack of better words. If you're a customer, customers tend to be larger customers, but they buy larger. Markets are geographically concentrated. Buyers are more rational and then emotional. Sales are direct and promotions uh, focuses. Okay? All right, let me just move this over here. Let me just bring this all down, and we've done pretty good today, class. Uh, oh, sorry. I use several programs, so I always forget. At least you have a general idea of what's going on here, right, class? Uh, let's see, I think I do it 100. Let's do 100. Okay. Do 100 on here. All right, we cover, here's what we covered today. We covered everything. I think Chapter 13 was a, a very interesting uh, chapter. It, we covered a lot of information. Let me just make it a little bit larger here. Okay? Talked about marketing, customer relationship, areas. Of, this one here, different four areas. We're in, and It's nice to see history. I'm not gonna, I didn't spend time on that. I didn't spend time in lecture. Let's just uh, go forward because we're more in a relationship. The whole thing is relationship, especially global, different culture uh, with uh, uh, low techs and high techs uh, with uh, uh, relationship uh, uh, attributes. Like it or not, we have to be more relationship. Uh, uh, how do I do a perfect promotion? We're going to have that down the road. Find out what customers think. Surveys, remember, secondary sur secondary uh, uh, sources is your best and expensive. Then you go to your primary after you have a good general idea. Make sure you utilize these concepts and terms in your final paper. Um, and if I went too quick, stop me, go forward. The more senses you utilize your voice, me writing, the better you're going to be. Again, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and I want to thank you again for taking uh, this course uh, with me. Uh, and uh, hopefully you take other classes with me. If you happen to find uh, stumble this on YouTube, uh, try to look me up. I'm either at College of Lake County or at Harper College. Ask for the Business Social Science and ask for Dr. George Machaki. Uh, and... Um, Let's see what I'm teaching. You'll help me out, all right? So it's a win-win for everyone, the school, the community, uh, you. Uh, uh, you're learning. you got a good, solid uh, foundation. And I'll see you in Chapter 14. I forget what 14 was. And it may be pricing. I'll talk to you later. Bye.